Um, so today we're going to be uh, talking about um, working memory and how you can um, get some new information and be able to put it into your memory and access it uh, easier, okay? Remembering things better, all right? So we're going to do a thinking routine called Plus One where you are going to, uh, in this case, we're going to watch a YouTube clip of how a video goes viral. And I don't want you to take any notes during the video. I just want you to be uh, engaged in listening and, wa and watching and noticing. And then after the video, I'll ask you to remember some of the key points, like right after the video. Remember some of the key points and you'll write them down, a list of things that you think and you found important from that video. And then we'll pass that to a friend and that friend will look at your list and add anything that they think uh, you've missed or they can add on to or connect to something that you have already, um, that you know. And then you'll pass it to another friend. And as you get your lists, you'll look at the lists and say, yeah, I remember those things. Or, oh, I can add something to that. So then you're retrieving that memory that you've just had. Okay? So we'll watch the video and then we'll, uh, we'll do that thinking routine. Okay? Hi, I'm Kevin Alaka. Uh, I'm the Trends Manager at YouTube, and I professionally watch YouTube videos. It's true. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how videos go viral and then why that even matters. We all want to be stars, uh, celebrities, singers, comedians. And when I was younger, that seemed so very, very hard to do. But now web video has made it so that any of us or any of the creative things that we do can become completely famous and a part of our world's culture. I mean, any one of you could be famous on the internet by next Saturday. But there are over 48 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. And of that, only a tiny percentage ever goes viral and gets tons of views and becomes a cultural moment. So how does it happen? Three things. Tastemakers, communities of participation, and unexpectedness. All right, let's go. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh, oh my god, woo, oh my, oh, wow. Last year, Bear Vasquez posted this video that he had shot outside his home in Yosemite National Park. In 2010, it was viewed 23 million times. <laughs> this is a chart of what it looked like when it first became popular last summer. But he didn't actually set out to make a viral video, Bear. He just wanted to share a rainbow, because that's what you do when your name is Yosemite Mountain Bear. <laughs> and he had posted lots of nature videos, in fact, and this video had actually been posted all the way back in January. So what happened here? Jimmy Kimmel, actually. Jimmy Kimmel posted this tweet that would eventually propel the video to be as popular as it had become, because tastemakers like Jimmy Kimmel introduce us to new and interesting things and bring them to a larger audience. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. So you didn't think that we could actually have this conversation without talking about this video, I hope. Uh, Rebecca Black's Friday is one of the most popular videos of the year. It's been seen nearly 200 million times this year. This is a chart of what it looked like, and similar to Double Rainbow, it seems to have just sprouted up out of nowhere. So what happened on this day? Well, it was a Friday, this is true. <laughs> and if you're wondering about those other spikes, those are also Fridays. <laughs> but, but what about this day, this one particular Friday? Well, Tosh Boy know picked it up, a lot of blogs started writing about it. Michael J. Nelson from Mystery Science Theater was one of the first people to post a joke about the video on Twitter. But what's important is that an individual or a group of tastemakers took a point of view and they shared that with a larger audience, accelerating the process. And so then this community formed of people who shared this big inside joke and they started talking about it and doing things with it. And now there are 10,000 parodies of Friday on YouTube. Even in the first seven days, there was one parody for every other day of the week. <laughs> a 
unlike the one-way entertainment of the 20th century, this community participation is how we become a part of the phenomenon, either by spreading it or doing something new with it. So, uh, Neon Cat is a, a looped animation with loop music. It's this, uh, just like this. It's been uh, viewed nearly 50 million times this year. And if you think that that is weird, you should know that there is a three-hour version of this that's been viewed four million times. <laughs> Even cats were watching this video. <laughs> cats were watching other cats watch this video. <laughs> All right, but... <laughs> but what's important here What's important here is the creativity that it inspired amongst this, this techie, geeky internet culture. There were remixes. Someone made an old-timey version. And then it went international. An entire remix community sprouted up that brought it from being just a stupid joke to something that we could all actually be a part of. Because we don't just enjoy now, we participate. And who could have predicted any of this? Who could have predicted Double Rainbow or Rebecca Black or Neon Cat? What script could you have written that would have contained this in it? In a world where over two days of video get uploaded every minute, only that which is truly unique and unexpected can stand out in the way that these things have. When a friend of mine told me that I needed to see this, this great video about a guy protesting bicycle fines in New York City, I admit I wasn't very interested. So I got a ticket for not riding in the bike lane, but often there are obstructions that keep you from properly riding in the bike lane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> By being totally surprising and humorous, Casey Neistat got his funny idea and point seen five million times. And so this approach holds for anything new that we do creatively. And so it all brings us to one big question. What does this mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Tastemakers, creative participating communities, complete unexpectedness. These are characteristics of a new kind of media and a new kind of culture where anyone has access and the audience defines the popularity. I mean, as mentioned earlier, one of the biggest stars in the world right now, Justin Bieber, got his start on YouTube. No one has to green light your idea and we all now feel some ownership in our own pop culture. And these are not characteristics of old media and they're barely true of the media of today but they will define the entertainment of the future. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like you to do uh, for our plus one thinking routine is, um, can you recall your key points of the video? What, what do you find to be meaningful from what you just watched? And I'd like you to write them on a piece of paper in a list. So get a piece of paper, maybe in your, uh, in your notebook, or if you have some paper uh, in your classroom. Yep. <clears throat> and just think about some of the key points in this video and, and write them down. Key points are the most important things that you think that you just saw. Okay, if you can please make sure that your name is on the paper because you're going to pass it around the room and then... I'm going to ask for you to give it back to the original person. If you could please uh, pass it to somebody at your table at first. So now uh, what I'd like you to do is to read over the key points that your friend had just passed you and see if you can add anything to it. Or, yes, please write on it. Add things to it. 
or connect to some of the ideas that they've already started if you want to elaborate on anything? Elaborate means to add more detail. Add more de or if you'd like to um, make a connection between some of the ideas. If you find that you had a key point or something that you found important in the video that is not on your friend's paper, then please add that. After we're done passing, we're going to take the time to get your own paper back, read through what other people have added, and then we're going to reflect on this whole experience together. Then you can talk to everybody about your connections. You can talk to people about how you felt about thinking and learning this way. That'll be the time for that. So I noticed that there are still a couple of people who are adding things, and that's totally okay. So we're going to take just a minute or so for you to finish that up. And then I would like you to pass it to somebody who's not at your table this time. So if you can take a minute to read the list of things that the original person had written down and the person who has added on to it and see if you can add anything more to it. Is there anything that you can recall that you can add to the list? If you can please take, uh, take about two minutes to uh, read over the key points or the important points that your friends added to your original list. Um, after you have read over the key points that your friends have added to your paper, if you would like to add any more that you found from other people's, that you don't think made it onto your own, this is a time for you now to add onto your own again. Those things, okay? Lots of times, teachers ask you to take notes as they're saying something, right? Yeah. They're talking to you about stuff and you're writing it down, okay? That's a very passive way of taking notes. And actually, note taking is a strategy for you to help remember things. But it's actually not the writing down part that helps you remember things. It's the recall of memory from, the, uh, from your brain back. And then storing it and recalling it. And storing it and recalling it. Okay? This is a way for you to think about a different way of taking notes or a different way of working with your memory. By a raise of hands, how many of you found something on your friend's papers that you were like, oh, that is a key point that I did not write on mine? Well, lots of us, lots of us. When you got your paper back, did you add those things? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. How did you feel about this thinking routine? What did you find to be important? What did you find to be different? Anything that you can add to the conversation about um, the experience of the plus one thinking routine. It was a great experience because you got to see what other people were thinking of and you also got to add your own ideas. So it was basically working together like a team. So it really helped you find what other people were thinking about it too. I liked it because when you passed it on, some of the things that you didn't even have on your paper, other people wrote it down because some people just wrote like, little tiny sentences, but once you passed it around, they actually wrote, like, bigger ones to make it more interesting. Um, I like the thingy because, like, we each started off a paper, and then we passed it on, and everyone just wrote it down. And then it was like we were all sharing one paper, and we got ideas, and then when we read our papers back again, everyone, we got everyone else's ideas, too. I like the way we pass it around because we got to share what we had a day idea and then if people didn't have it on their papers, they can write it. I liked this experience because I got to see what other people think, not just only what I thought of it. Because as I passed papers around and people wrote on mine and I wrote on theirs, I liked reading like other people's papers and adding to it and reading what people put on my papers. It was really fun.
I liked that we were passing it around and sharing our ideas because then we could put our ideas with other people's ideas and make like a big project. I enjoyed learning that you don't have to be famous already to get a video to go viral. One person will just say, hey, there's this funny video I saw, and many people will watch it, and they can easily become viral that way. I like the strategy of passing it around because, um, like, if you saw somebody's paper and they missed something that they saw and you had it in your head, then you could just write it down on the paper and they would have it easily. I kind of like the process because you're getting to see what other people thought and, like, what their ideas were and what they <coughs> saw. And if you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that, and I thought that... And you thought that that was a cool idea. When you get your papers back, like when you're done passing them all around, then you could write that down because you thought it was kind of cool. Maybe sometimes uh, people want to watch something when they're bored. So, like, look, they want to watch something stupid, like, for an example. Like, someone falling off a bridge or... Um, or someone... Or a neon cat. I think it was fun because other people could, like, read your ideas, and you could read other people's ideas, and if you forgot something, maybe you'd, like, read it off someone's paper, and then you'll write it on yours.